What do you do when your child calls you a dumb fucking bitch? Oh shit. Welcome back to the show, guys. Yes, it is labeled explicit for a reason. We are having adult conversations, and today is no different. Let's get started. All right, ladies. So I know there's going to be some debate on this topic. Um, This is a true story that happened to me. And yes, unfortunately, I tell my children all the time that they may be uh, products of conversations that I have on the podcast or stories I tell in the book, Uh, but they are my greatest teachers. And I think all of our children are our greatest teachers. So with their permission, I utilize our parenting moments for opportunity for growth. So first of all, I, when things like this happen in my parenting journey of, you know, children saying things that wouldn't normally uh, be socially acceptable, the feedback I typically receive from someone um, of an older generation is I would never I would have never talked to my mom like that because I would have got slapped in the face or I would have got my ass beat um, or, um, you know, just things in general of like, oh, my child would never talk to me like that. So I want, I want to give you a bigger perspective here of what's going on because there is a paradigm shift happening in parenting and we need to have kind of like a come to Jesus moment about it because what's really happening is, you know, the way that we were parented and the way our parents were parented caused a lot of trauma. Let's just be honest, right? It caused a lot of trauma and there's scientific research to prove that like spanking a child, slapping a child, beating a child, you know, um, your emotional words towards a child, like discipline, consequence, chronically emotional abuse. There's a difference between disciplining a child and having consequence, but the yelling and the screaming and the combativeness in relationships, there is scientific proof and evidence that you actually are rewiring a brain for trauma when this is present chronically. So when a child says to me, you're a dumb fucking bitch, which my son, my teenage son said to me, and I will tell you the whole story and how it went down and what really happened was, um, you know, that is a breeding ground. That is an opportunity to get your ass beat, right? Traditionally of what did you say to me? Right? Get your ass over here. And then you're screaming. You're, you know, that volcano is about to erupt inside of you and you may want to punch that child, slap that child, drag them by their ear to their room and say, you're grounded for the rest of your life. Don't you ever fucking talk to me like that again. Right? I'm going to take away this. I'm going to take away that. I'm going to take away this. And you're screaming and yelling. And guess what just happened? You are rewiring your child's brain for trauma. And as you know, if you are a child of a product of this, as you're older, then you have all this work to do to reverse engineer the trauma that has been um, implanted in you. And then when you have your own children, you are bringing this pattern into your parenting because you know nothing else, right? So you're reacting off of trigger or you do the complete opposite. So where's this healthy boundary in between? So I am here today to kind of not decode, but to tell you what I did and why I do what I do. And by no means am I a guru. Um, I actually feel like there is no such thing as a parenting expert because one, a lot of the parenting books that I read are, um, are actually written by people who are 
like don't have children, which is very weird. Um, a lot of the parenting books are written, um, from, well, I'm sure they have children, but well, some of them don't. And the ones that do, um, you know, they're out of the actual parenting phase, right? Cause maybe their children have children or something like that. So what I do find is a lot of parenting books are based on research, like, oh, the research shows this, but there's no practical application of, you know, what do I do in that moment when your child calls you a dumb, mm-mm-mm, right? That's what I'll say now, a dumb, mm-mm-mm. and what do you do in that moment? So here's my breakdown of this. And this is just me and I'm just one person. And my mission is to help you feel confident as a parent and to break those generational patterns of abuse in how you, um, in the relationship between you and your child. Okay. So I wasn't always like this. I wasn't always cool as a cucumber and I'm not always like this every single day, but this is how it went down. So my son was mad. I got three boys. There are 13, eight and five. And, um, the 13 year old was annoyed and agitated. Okay. I talk about red, green, and yellow zones. So because he was agitated, he was in his yellow zone, meaning, you know, the wind, like everyone has their yellow zones. We're just like, I'm off today. Okay. So he was in his yellow zone and then he interacted with his eight-year-old brother and something happened and he was annoying him because he was in his yellow zone. And you know, when you're annoyed, you want to annoy the rest of the world. Right. And his eight-year-old brother headbutted him. Now, if you've ever gotten headbutted, oh, that is the worst feeling in the entire world, right? Like if your child, excuse me, <coughs> if your child has ever headbutted you, you know, it's like instant fight or flight. Like there's just something triggered within you and you're just like, oh my gosh, this, this feels awful. I just want to punch somebody in the face. So, um, uh, he came upstairs and I said something like, okay, calm down. Like what's going on. But I was trying to calm and diffuse the situation in the red zone. You can't do that because the child is, um, it's like talking to a brick wall. You, you know, their, their stress hormones are through the roof. They're not being rational. Like you can't do that. It's like when you're breaking up a fight and you're asking the person like, so why did you want to fight? You, they're still in fight or flight mode. You can't, you can't talk to them. So something happened and I, I, probably said, calm down, you know, guys, what's going on. And so my son, uh, under his voice with, you know, under his, um, his breath said something about me like, Oh, you're such a dumb fucking bitch. And so instantly, instantly my brain went to, okay, he's pissed. He's beyond pissed. Okay. I didn't react at all. And I'm going to tell you why I think I didn't react later. So I didn't react at all. And in my brain, I went, he's in his red zone. You can't talk to him until he's in his green zone. Because if you go in there right now, you're just going to do more damage. And the reason why I know this guys is from trial and error, right? From in the past, um, making really bad decisions as a parent and going in there and then just literally adding more fuel to the fire and just watching it explode, right? So why am I going to enter someone else's red zone when I'm just going to get ignited and then we're both going to be calling each other <laughs> dumb fucking bitches because it's not going to be pretty. So I waited, I waited, I waited. And he came out of his room and he immediately apologized and said, I'm sorry for calling you that. And I said, well, I understand you were angry and I understand that, you know, and thank you for your apology, but those words are not acceptable in this home. Therefore there's a consequence. So punishment versus consequence, right? You don't pay your taxes. You have to pay interest. You speed, you get a speeding ticket. So it doesn't mean, you know, the punishment versus consequence thing. It doesn't mean that in that moment you have to scream and yell and take everything away. So there's a consequence for your words. There's a consequence, especially when you're projecting your words onto somebody else in the home, right? It's one thing to say, ah, fuck. It's another thing to say, you're this type of person. So there's a consequence 
for his words. And we said it in a kind, loving demeanor. And he knew, he knew that his words had a consequence and he took ownership for it and followed through. Now, do you see how this would have been different if I said, how dare you? You're grounded, blah, blah, blah. And then I say things out of a heightened reaction and then he doesn't respond well, right? And then we're both angry at each other. So the key here is you need to circle back around when your child is in the green zone. I remember one time when I was doing a speaking gig at a talking to a group of parents at a school and I introduced the red, yellow, and green zone. And I said, in the green zone, we're all fine and dandy, right? We're all getting along. And in the yellow zone, um, we do have yellow zones, but a lot of people are not conscious enough to understand what their yellow zone is. But it's you're feeling it like, oh, I'm getting agitated. Oh, I'm kind of on the edge today, right? I'm on the edge. And the red zone is the blow up. And that's where we want to discipline and that's where we want a consequence. But the truth is we have to wait. You have to wait and circle back around to the conversation when your child is therefore in their green zone. And go, remember yesterday when you blew up on your brother? What was going on there? And then you can say it from a calm state of being. So there's another side of this equation that I'm not talking about. This is typically the side of the equation that you read in in the books and go, well, Heather, that's all great and dandy, but what do I do when I am very reactive? So I posted this scenario um, in my Facebook group, the Mom is in Control Village, and people said, oh, you're way more enlightened than me. You're way more evolved and conscious than me because I would have never been able to react that way. So this is where the magic happens. This is where you have to do the work. This is where, you know, when you say to me, I can't afford it, I don't have time. And I say, your excuses are keeping you stuck. Your excuses are actually causing you to cause more trauma in your family Your excuses are your resistance to break the generational patterns of trauma and emotional abuse. That is what's happening here. And it's really sad to see because you can't make anybody do the work when they're not willing to do the work, right? So one thing that I've created for you guys is um, I started to, because I understand Um, not everyone is going to want to jump into doing the deep dive into the work and working with me one-on-one or in a group setting. So I am now offering my alignment workshop and my energetic time management workshops for you at a very affordable prices. And you can check them out at heatherchauvin.com forward slash workshops. But I'm going to tell you why, you know, what is energetic time management or the alignment workshop, or the teacher kids to meditate program that are all available on site, um, have anything to do with the topic that I'm talking about today. In order to be non-reactive, I had to do the work. And what did that mean? I had to feel really comfortable in my own body and mind. I had to get really crystal clear on how I wanted to feel in my parenting. I had to get really crystal clear on how I wanted to feel in my marriage, in my home, in my career, with my time, my money, my energy. I needed the clarity to know who I wanted to be and how I wanted to show up in the world. That is what the alignment workshop is going to gift you. Because guys, we're living out of alignment. We're parenting by default. We're living from this place of exhaustion and misery. No wonder why you are reactive. When you can't sleep at night because you're curious if you're, um, you know, going to be able to pay the bills or if your marriage is going to fall apart or am I failing as a parent? It's not about the parenting strategy. It's about the prep work to get to that moment. So when you are in that moment with your child, you are all there and you are non-reactive. 
What is an energetic time management? What does managing your time have anything to do with parenting? When you feel in alignment in your life, when you feel in control of your time, it's the ripple effect. It's going to show up in every aspect of your life. When you're so badly just creating freedom and space and you know how to create that for yourself and you actually follow through, this is where the magic happens. Because when you feel fuller, when you feel like you have the space, when you feel like I'm strong, I'm confident, I know exactly what I want and I know how to get it, this is going to ripple and directly influence your parenting. And the teach your kids to meditate, I go more into, you know, understanding mindfulness, teaching mindfulness to your children, but more importantly, it's about helping you really truly understand what are their behaviors telling me and how can I become non-reactive? So you can purchase these programs individually, or you can bundle them in a package and gain, um, and gain a significant, um, savings. And you can check that out at my website at heatherchauvin.com forward slash workshops. So understand that this parenting stuff, it's a projection, right? I'm not a huge advocate of our children's behavior as a reflection of us, but what I am a huge advocate of is our children are here to teach us where we can grow. And life gives you contrast, right? Simple contrast is when your child says to you, you're a dumb fucking bitch and you react and you do things that you are so ashamed and embarrassed of. And at the end of the day, go, what did I just do? We teach people how to treat us. And my child knows that those words are not valued in our home. Those words are not acceptable. But I also value connection and I also value love and I also value respect And if I expect my child to respect me physically, meaning they're not going to lash out at me, they're not going to physically harm me, I have to do the same with them. So it's, I see you. I know. Thank you. I thank you for apologizing. I know those words weren't meant to be harmful, but they were said. And because they were said, there's a consequence. And when you can get to that point in your life where you're having this connection with your child, this heart to heart, rather than screaming and yelling, this is what it feels like to be in control. But the strategy doesn't start in that moment. The strategy starts with you feeling in control of your whole life. You taking the action steps to do the pre-work. You got to do the work, guys. You can't just expect some freaking magical strategy in that moment and everything will change. That's a symptom to the deeper rooted problem. Why do you feel disrespected? Why do you feel out of control? Why do you feel like there's never enough? You have to step back, reassess, do the work, and then lead your life from a place of alignment. And that is what these workshops are going to show you. You have control. You have mastery. The question is, why do you believe that you are not enough? And your children will show you where you need to grow. Thanks, guys. Talk soon.